Let's take a look then at what is on the menu for today. The riders again start with three loops in Danan before they make their way northwards towards the Roubaix Velodrome. After the appetizer, the riders start to make their way towards the cobbles. They hit the first sector at 82.4 kilometers to go. And they're gonna eat up 29.2 kilometers of cobblestone sections before they make their way into the velodrome for the race finish. There's what's coming up going to be a very big day out of the road. The riders signed on between 12.25 and 1.25 and they got themselves underway at 1.35 in the afternoon. Since the riders got started on today's uh, Paris-Roubaix Femme Avic Zwift, it has been a very, very fast tempo. In the first hour of racing, these riders covered 42.7 kilometers in total, and now they've made their way onto the first sector of Pave. This is at Ornon a Wandoni. This is a 3.7 kilometer section of Pave. And remember when Lizzie Dignan won the Paris-Roubaix Fama Vic Zwift, she was already on the attack when they got to this sector, and then she just rode away and soloed 82 kilometers to the race finish. The news of the day is the pace has been very, very high. And if we look up there at the top left-hand side of the screen, a group of riders have got five minutes and 13 seconds on a peloton, which is now having to do a little bit of chasing. The group of riders, Lisa Klein, Femke Marcus, Alice Towers, Eugenia Duval, Danny Kengeveld, Marta Lack, Katia Oragusa, Laura Tomasi, Josie Talbot, Lisa Van Elvoort, Julia Borgstrom, Alison Jackson, Marie Morgan Ledunf, Susanna Anderson, Amber Pate, Jesse Van der Boek, Marion Boras, Marta Troyan, 18 riders with five minutes and nine seconds. The only other news to bring you up to speed with, there was a pretty big crash earlier on in the race and a number of riders came down, including Lily Williams, also Megan Jastrab, and uh, they've made their way back into the peloton now. The gap is 5.10. It's starting to look a little bit dicey out here for this peloton. They're gonna have to start to do something pretty special to bring this race back together. Let's just take a little look at this replay. And a rider just crashing on the right-hand side. In fact, two riders crashing. And I hope that lady standing there is okay. Well, that is Harry Roubaix. There is uh, going to be crashes all over the place this afternoon. For the breakaway, they have made their way off this first sector. The next sector will beckon at 75 kilometers go. So we've got a little bit of time before we reach that second sector at Walanga Brion. The peloton led by Eleanor Backstead. And as you can see, Plenty of places to hit some water, have a crash, and another rider has just done that and ended up taking a bit of a swim on the right-hand side. We see Daniel Kengeveld, the Team DSM rider, 20-year-old 20 rider off the front of this peloton, a stage winner in the Belgrade Women's Tour, just riding nice and steadily off the front and setting a tempo, maybe just trying to pull this gap out a little bit more and. Perhaps DSM are saying to her now, previously they were riding because they were obviously worried about ooh, 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 going to the grass at the side. Whew, manages to ride that somehow. But previously DSM were riding, but maybe now she's been given the nod. Pull this out and see what can happen. As the gap has continued to grow, because it was Team DSM who were keeping things under control when the gap to the breakaway was at around the two minute, two and a half minute marker. And now it's started to stretch out beyond five minutes. And as we've seen already, they've gained another 15, 16 seconds, despite the workload that Trek Segafredo are doing. So maybe the nod has been given and it's it's not a ruley that this won't go all the way to the finish, this breakaway. We've seen it in the past with Lizzie Dignan two years ago. 
that she made her move with 81 kilometers to go, and that was it. Nobody ever saw her again. So Danique Hangeveld is having a tremendous ride, and there's no reaction I'm surprised about, actually, from the breakaway either, because um, it's they're in a really strong position at the moment. But in saying that, we've already started to see a couple of riders lose contact from this breakaway already. So it's uh, it's not easy as they come off one of uh, the uh, the next sector. Off sector 16, and they've got around about a kilometre to go until we hit uh, Toloi, and that's at Saar at Rosier, and that is a four-star section. So quite a tricky section coming up on the next one. We're hearing that Lisa Van Elvoort is the rider who is in difficulty at the back. And now we are seeing uh, at the back of the course, coming back into the peloton, uh, this is Mariana Voss. So a puncture for Mariana Voss as she makes her way back in. She chose to ride a different setup today for Paris-Roubaix. Here she is. As she got back on the bike, she was riding a one by setup with a 50 tooth chain ring and a 10 to 33 cassette on the back of this bike today, choosing to do something a little bit different, knowing that there's no real climbs in Barry Roubaix, so it's all about keeping the power on. Mariana Voss has now just broken away from her teammate Corinne Lebecki and is making her way across to this peloton of riders. This is Mariana Voss. She's decided she needs to take everything into her own hands. She can't rely on anybody else. So she's going to try and she's going to try and go across and go across quickly, which is what you're generally told. When you think you can cross the gap, go and just try and go full on and get across. And you can see that she's just asked Marie Lene of FDJ Suez to come through and do a turn. A little shake of the head from Lene there, the French rider. and. Voss has got to do this all, all on her own. She has no option. She has no time to, to waste or to spare to start mucking around and, and start having a conversation with Lene, saying, well, if you want to get back, you need to help me. Voss needs to do this. And she just can see the, the persistence and uh, in which she's putting in to try and get back now. But Marie Lene, she just can't contribute. There's nothing she can do. There's no reason why she wouldn't ride. She just simply doesn't have any legs. Dania Kengeveld, our solo leader. A fantastic performance by this rider so far. She's taken the race into her own hands. She's dreaming of winning the Paris-Roubaix. There's no reason why this rider couldn't. We already know that Megan Jastrab and Pfeiffer Georgie are the two strong riders in the group. But Francisca Cox has been dreaming of this race ever since it started to exist. And we're going to take the race into our own hands and we're going to make our own luck. This is Mariana Voss just saying to her, come through and just give me a turn. If she can just give her a moment's respite, give her 10, 20 seconds to sit on the wheel just to recover, it means the Voss can go again. And you just saw that little exchange between Lene and Voss there and already Voss powering her way to try and get across. She knows that the gap now is, well, it says on the uh, the graphic there, uh, a little under 30 seconds. But when we saw that uh, camera angle before, well, yeah, it definitely has gone out. Also, I noticed there for DSM is Charlotte Cool. She is there as well on the right-hand side. As we see for the first time now, Lorena Wiebes comes to the front for Team SD Works. We heard the team radio earlier. They were saying, be relaxed, but I'm not so sure that they can afford to be this relaxed as they go on to Oshi a Bursay. And Mariana Voss still almost on the back of these cars and we keep saying it this chase has been relentless it's agonizingly close isn't it for mariana voss it, the time gap closes then it swings out the pendulum as it continues to go but with sd works i wonder if remain relaxed i wonder if that means keep yourself relaxed on the cobbles don't tense the body make sure that you can keep the body relaxed and spin the legs as you see Voss and Lynette on to Oshi. And a little bit of an attack now. And this is a move and this is a concerted effort. The attack now of Lotta Kopecki. Kopec oh, and a huge crash behind. A number of riders have hit the deck just as Kopecki decides that this is the time to go. 
Correct. on the ground. Beck Backstead, I think, is down. Besite is down. Also, Charlotte Cole of DSM there, number 55. That was right at the front of the peloton in reaction to Lotta Kabecki, who has ignited this race and decided that she cannot wait any longer. The rider who has been the dominant force in the classics, she won the Tour of Flanders and she is going clear. And look at Trek Segafredo. They're all over the place trying to come across. Fight for Georgie is surfing the wheels. This is how it happened. This was where Lotta Kopecki came round and she made her move here. Was it a touch of wheels between Trek Segafredo behind? I mean, it's quite restricted in, in terms of how that crash happened. But the only team at the moment, Luisa Longobogini out of the saddle, trying to get onto the wheel of Lotta Kopecki. Also Bron, but she's starting to be distanced as well. Lorcha Mackay looks like uh, is also going across for Movistar. Suddenly, this peloton, which was in one long line, it's like a grenade has been thrown in. There are riders spread all over the cobbles. There are riders grappling for wheels. Mariana Voss has found some willing allies. One of them is Eleanor Backstead, who has hit the deck. 3.45 now. The attack of Kopecki is really putting some riders in the gutter. Look at Longaboard Gini, last year's winner, hauling away onto the wheel, whilst Kopecki looks very, very easy. Elisa Longaboard Gini now on the front. The group has swelled. One of the riders from Life Plus Wahoo has made themselves into this group, also with Fenix de Koenig. Julie Leff is in this group, the former Danish champion in the yellow and red colours of Uno X. Coming off this sector already. Sector 10, Elisa Longo Borghini. She wrote in her blog this week that Paris Roubaix Famavic Zwift is going to be a very special race. Wearing number one, there's Mariana Voss just taking a drink. We'll get an idea where she is. She's about a minute behind. She's just taking that big, deep breath. And Lisa Longoborghini said, when I think about it, I can remember my victory so clearly. Here's the British champion trying to come back to the leading group. And this is where it all changes for Canyon Stram now. They no longer have a rider out front who's capable or able to win this race. And so the whole tactic changes for Canyon Stram with Magnus Backstead in the car as the sports director You'll see Elise Shabby doing a lot more work in that group behind the group of Lotte Kopecki now that uh, Alice Towers is finding herself in difficulty. Alice Interesting there from Space Kanav, and he's just saying to his riders, don't waste too much energy. Let all the others do the work. Save in a big, big crash oh. here in this group, in this chasing group, and the only rider to avoid it, Romy Kasper. Wow, that is an entire group of 18. With the exception of one have hit the deck 17 riders hit the deck what a shame for this group they were making such brilliant progression at points and the we didn't really get a clear let's take a as look to what happened a slide Whoa. from elisa longa Borghini. oh dear me oh, there was nothing the last year's winner could do longa Borghini hits the deck and romy casper must be looking around thinking what happened there Longer ball, Gini just couldn't do anything. Couldn't do anything. You could see the back wheel going from side to side on this greasy, slippery, muddy section. Kopecki down, Lorena Weeb is down. Brond also in that uh, in that crash. Well, I, I uh, see also one of the riders from Uno X also was able to avoid that. Julie left number 155 in the yellow and black. So it looked like the Austrian champion, Christina Schweinberger, didn't get herself tangled, but you could just see the only rider of Casper was able to avoid that. She looked around and wondered where everybody went. 14 riders hit the deck then out of a group of 18. Incredible. Just shows you one moment you're on the front, the next moment with Parry Roubaix, that's it. You hit the deck and that's it, game over. Let's hope all these riders can get back on. But as you mentioned, Hannah, 
the group, the group was coming back, the gap was dropping, it was dropping quickly, but now that momentum is lost. They've got to regroup, there'll be broken bikes, there'll be broken wheels, there'll be riders who can't get themselves going again. If riders need, and let's just take a look here, this is Sana Kant of Fenix de Koenig, former world champion in cyclocross, in the blue jersey there. That's such a shame for Sana Kant, having made her way into the group of favourites, the former world cyclocross champion hitting the deck pretty hard. Well, Romy Casper, having been one of the last riders to make her way into that group of favourites, is now solo, and we'll find out where the rest of the riders are. Lucinda Brand just sitting in here and taking things uh, pretty steadily. In fact, she's looking for the team car. I don't know if Brand's got a puncture here. Has Lucinda Brand got a mechanical problem? Is Trek Segafredo's race all going to now rest on Lisa Klein in the front group? I think Lucinda Brand has a back wheel puncture. Last year's podium finisher, Brand, needs the team car and she needs the team car quickly. Has she got a rear wheel puncture or is she just looking for a little bit of assistance? I mean, Hannah, they're riding a lot lower pressure, but it's hard to see. Very, very difficult to see. And as you say, Anthony, when they're onto the asphalt, onto the tarmac, it never really gives a, a clear view or explanation as to whether they've got a puncture because they are running such low pressures because of the cobble sectors. Some of the riders on sort of 2.8 to, to 3.1 bar trying to mix things up a little bit Katia Ragusa goes clear and wants to get a bit more momentum into this group which is important but it can either take a little group of riders off the front or it can mean everybody will slow down even more it's a tentative move that could pay dividends but might have some problems she came from the middle of the bunch with a big explosive attack there. No immediate reaction from the group behind, but I think we're starting to see some very tired legs in this front group now. And Ragusa, she's found herself on the front, the young Italian. As we go on to the seventh sector, Sisong Borel, 1,300 meters. It's a three-star sector. Here is Femke Marcus on the right-hand side for SD Works, and she'll know of everything that's been going on behind with the crashes that they were in a strong position, but then finding themselves again on the back foot, on the front in the pink jersey is Alison Jackson, the former Canadian road race champion. 1.33 for the chasing group, oh, two minutes for the peloton. There's the chasers, there's the peloton. Things are closing up. Slowly but surely, the gaps are starting to come back. It's, it's not 30 seconds, or is it? I mean, is that is that time gap over-reading, or is it um, about right between the two groups? Because when you saw that helicopter shot, it certainly looked foreshortened. Didn't look like 30 seconds to me. There's Mariana Voss. Voss is on the wheel and has got some people to ride with. But Lotta Kopecki is flying her way across these cobbles. And not too far from the wheel of Lotta Kopecki is Audrey Cordon Rago, who seemingly, having had a bad patch a little while ago, the French champion is now starting to look better and better as this race continues. She's finished in the top 10 before. Distanced from the chasers is Le Dunf. She was in the front group of 18. She went back to the chasers. Now she's going to go back to the peloton off sector number six they've got two fearsome sectors coming up next big attack now from uh, Alison Jackson the former Canadian champion who has been suffering a little bit by the looks of things it's been a little bit all over her bike now decides right let's try and break this group up a little bit big acceleration Big acceleration from behind as well from Femke Marcus of SD Works. She wants to try and bridge across to the wheel of Jackson Ragusa, also reacting to this move, as is Anderson. And Jackson, she wants to try and put a bit of impetus back into this group. We've seen that they've been quite stale for the last 10 kilometers or so, where they're, 
th there's lots of tired legs. There's not really any rider who wants to contribute or, or waste any energy or, or use any of the energy they've got remaining in the tank. And immediately that move from Alison Jackson there has put a number of riders out of the back and the gap is coming down so rapidly that the cars have been pulled out of the gap behind the breakaway too. Let's bring you up to speed if you've just tuned in now. This race was led by 18 riders. 15 of them still remain at the front. They are now one minute and five seconds from a group containing Longa Borghini, Brand, Shabby, Georgie, Bastianelli, Consoni, Casper, Leth, Vigi, Martins and Schweinberger. And then the gap back to a group containing Mariana Voss at one minute and 24 seconds. But they are now, as we've said many times, tantalizingly close to catching the chasers and then I think this race is going to kick off all the way to the line the front group of riders is shredded after that attack of Alison Jackson 58 seconds Jackson is still there for Canada what a wonderful ride by Alison Jackson a terrific ride oh, oh. And a big crash there for Tomasi Tomasi hits the deck for UAE ADQ. It's exactly what happens. You take the wrong line or you touch a wheel and that is it, game over. Oh, big thud. Land so, so hard, the rider from UAE Team ADQ. And that has put another split into this leading group. Now, the only riders who remain at the front, Marta Lack, Alison Jackson, it's the rider from San Michel, Mavic Aubert, 93. That's Marion Boras, who has fought her way back through. Also, Fenix de Koenig with Martha Troyen. This is Lisa Klein, who has been caught by Lucinda Brandt. Klein, an Olympic champion on the track in the team pursuit, caught by her teammate. So now it's Brand Shabby. Look at the way that Shabby is hunching the head into those shoulders, trying to hold onto the wheel of the former World Cyclocross champion. On her wheel is Consoni doing a wonderful ride today. Behind her is Romy Casper hanging on as well. It's all coming together for the chasers now. This is the move. This is another attack of Team DSM as they look to try and put themselves into the winning position. All the teams are now starting to play their cards. 12.4 kilometers to go. 34 seconds for our leading group. The chasers sense now that the prey is just ahead of them and they can possibly win this race. And right now, Mariana Voss must be sitting on the back and thinking, how did I get here? Because at one moment, it looked like the race was over. Has An attack now at the front. Sorry, no, this is the group who were tailed off and Elisa Longa Borghini is dragging this group across to the former leader, Danik Hengeveld, who's about to be caught. Front of the race, Marta Lack puts in another big acceleration to try and keep the momentum of this front group going. Within this group, it's that stubbornness to give up, knowing that the group is almost breathing down your neck at 26 seconds. Here it is, Jaco Alula with Amber Payne on the front at the moment. I think within this group, they might have Nina Kessler. She's trying to take a look around. Who has she got in this group? Is she just assisting everybody else here? And has Nina Kessler been tailed off after one of these cobble sectors? Still, that gap is maintained. In the chasing group then, Longo Borghini, last year's winner. Brand, last year's third place finisher. Elise Shabby, last year's fourth place finisher. Five for Georgie, who's finished previously in the top 10. Marta Bastianelli, also a top 10 of finisher. Chiara Consoni, one of the fastest finishers in the world. Laura Tomasi, Romy Casper, Julia Bergstrom, Suzanne Anderson are all in that group. Also in there, Lotta Kopecki, it's a big group of riders. Let's take a look. Femke Marcus still glancing around. The seven leaders maintain 10 seconds. Marcus Duval and another big attack on the right hand side. But the tired legs mean that you just don't get much distance. This is uh, Eugenie Duval on the colors of FDJ. 
They lost uh, Vittoria Guazzini before this race, who had a big crash on the Recon. Here's the chasers, and the momentum's gone out yet again. They're all looking around at each other. Alice Towers goes to the front. Realises she needs to do something for her team leader, doesn't she? She needs to do something. She needs to try and draw some impetus into this group. And everybody starting to look around. And where it was at 10 seconds, I, I think that gap saw more like 15 seconds at the moment between the front group and that chasing group. For Alice Towers, she knows that she can lay everything on the line for Elise Chabé. Chabé, she wants to come here. She wants to go home with a minimum of a podium. Lotta Kopecky, she wants the win. This has been her main goal of the whole season. She talked things down. She was so prepared for Paris-Roubaix. She didn't even want to talk about it, even in January, that it could be a possibility of winning. She just wanted to go through the process. She wanted to take everything possible, everything in, in her stride throughout the Spring Classic. She won Flanders last week. She would become the first female to win the Flanders and Paris-Roubaix if she takes the victory today in the same year. They're still holding on. Five and a half kilometers to go. They're on the run into Roubaix and six, le seven leaders still have a chance. 15 seconds. Have these chasers looked around at each other, opened the window and let these riders out again. Marcus Duval, Luck, Ragusa, Jackson, Boras and Troyan putting in some massive turns right now. She's still making everyone believe Big attack on the left-hand side of the road. Lucinda Brand kicks and kicks hard. That was a huge acceleration there from Lucinda Brand, the podium finisher last year, and the reaction comes from the Austrian champion. That's Christina Schweinberger. There is FDJ Suez. That's Grace Brown, who's uh, tracking the move, as is Elise Chabé. Schweinberger was cute to that new that she needed to track that very, very quickly. Last year's winner, Elisa Longo-Borghini, is still in here. So is Mariana Voss, but they still have to catch this group of seven who now have not 10 seconds. They've doubled their advantage. It's now 20. Shabby is there, wearing number 21. Looks across, needs a little bit of assistance. And here goes another attack. Last year's winner, Elisa Longo-Borghini, springs away from the front of the chasers. On her wheel goes Lotta Kopecky. Look at the power of Elisa Longo-Borghini now. She's had a massive crash on the cobbles, but with four kilometers to go, she is throwing everything at this to try and win. And Bastianelli doing a wonderful job here. This is Katia Ragusa. Marta Lack still committed, still trying to keep this going. Marion Boras also has done a magnificent job. This is the remnants of an 18 rider breakaway that took almost six minutes. And with 2,600 meters to go, not long until they take a little bit of chicane left and right and onto the final section of cobbles and then onto the velodrome and we could have 25 riders sprinting for the finish if they get caught flick of the elbow from bastianelli she delivers to elisa longo borghini we're all starting to look around lotta Kopecky there on the wheel of elisa longo borghini there's five for georgie as well the fastest sprinter from this group, Barta Lack, the way the, the turn of speed that she has come the end of an arduous race is quite something to behold. Seven riders then, Jackson goes through to the front. Boras moves over to the right-hand side. Marta Lack checks over her shoulder in that blue and red jersey. Jackson flicks the elbow. They cannot afford to not keep driving on. 10 seconds, 1,800 meters. These riders have been on the attack since nearly the start of this 145 kilometers of racing. They are still holding on. Somehow, they might go all the way to the finish. There's the gap. It's still there. 10 seconds. There's still the potential. As they take now the little chicane, they go left, they go right, and they come on to the final 300 meters of cobbles before the velodrome. Seven leaders could still do it. 
Only 300 meters long, one star rating, and it's still Marta Lack on the front. Is she doing too much work, though? Is this too much too soon for Lack? But she's certainly laying it all down on the line to go in for the win. She makes the right-hand turn off that sector. And now we get set for the entrance to the most historic velodrome in world cycling. A group of seven riders may well outwit all of the favorites. They're gonna come onto this velodrome and they've got a chance of winning. Parry Roubaix, Famavik, Zwift. The breakaway is still away. Marta Lack now on the front. Alison Jackson in the wheels. I think they're gonna stay away. This is absolutely incredible that seven riders might outwit this peloton. One lap of racing to go. Marta Lack is on the front. And the chasing group only just coming onto the velodrome. And what is the gap? Lack still on the front at the moment. Femke Marcus on the wheel. Oh! There's a big crash. Marcus is down. Femke Marcus hits the deck. Six riders now are going to fight it out. I don't think they're going to be caught. On the front is Lack. Is it going to be Marion Boras on the other side? Alison Jackson, the sprint starts. It is Marion Boras on the front for the small team of San Michel. Alison Jackson of EF Education, Silicon Valley Bank. Alison Jackson, the Canadian, firing away for the finish. Is she going to do it? She does. Alison Jackson wins Paris Roubaix, Fama Vic Swift. Wow. Here what comes a performance. Lotta Kopecky wins the bunch sprint. But the breakaway outwitted all the superstars. <laughs> Hannah, you look absolutely dumbstruck. I'm shocked. I am shocked. What a beautiful race. Right until the final moment, we still didn't know which way this race was going to go. Jackson, wow, and Marta Bastianelli, it is. Wow, she waves goodbye in her final year. Alison Jackson wins. What a finish. What an absolutely incredible finish to a bike race. There's Megan Earl, the soigneur of EF Education, Tibco Silicon Valley Bank. And for Alison Jackson, I think she's also just struck at what she's just achieved. Well, they had just under 10 seconds and somehow they held on. Somehow, the favourites looked around at the moment when it was less than 10 and they let them go again. And the amount of power that this group put in, I, Alison Jackson has just won the, the biggest bike race of her life. It's, it's beyond belief. 116 kilometres in the breakaway. The gap as it yo-yoed from five minutes 45 all the way down to 10 seconds in the final couple of kilometers and despite all of the different chase the different compositions of groups they still weren't able to bring back the breakaway and the breakaway is won. the breakaway wins you won paris roubaix fam with wift i sure did <laughs> what is going on in your head it's uh yeah, I mean, we when we did the pre-ride and we rode around this velodrome and I just dream of winning. Uh, but a lot of times those dreams just stay dreams. And uh, it's unreal to make it happen in real life. So I have few words. How did you manage your day tactically? I wanted to be a part of the action. I wanted to be ahead of the race. I didn't want to wait. Um, our team for the for this spring has just been waiting, um, and it hasn't been working. Um, and because we had a bit of rain uh, earlier in the week, it was going to be slick out there. And in a race like this, you just need to avoid bad luck in order to get a good luck to get a win. And uh, so when the move went, um, I I was just waiting and available, and then and then wanted to ride it. And in the final there, the group was coming back to us, and there's only four of us maybe in that group of seven that actually wanted to ride, but either either you don't ride and you lose the race or or you ride hard and you maybe you have a chance. Um, and I just 
trusted in myself and in my passion and heart for just wanting to get in the bike race and it turned out with a win. When you crossed the finish line, what did you think about? Oh man, I saw it coming <laughs> and it had clear space and I just, oh, it's, yeah, a dream come true. Just I, to cross the finish line first of any bike race is a special type of fun. Uh, and this, <laughs> this one tops that. In a few minutes, you're gonna go on the podium. Are you ready to leave the cobble? <laughs> I am so ready. I'm gonna whatever strength I've got left. This is a hard bike race, but I think I've still got so much energy. I'm gonna lift that thing high. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Alison Jackson wins Paris Roubaix Fam Avec Zwift. There's the result. The breakaway went to the finish. Ragusa second, Troyan in third. The big names led in by Lotta Kopecki in seventh place. Ali Action Jackson, as she names herself, has won the Paris Roubaix. <laughs> She's ready. She's ready. She's well known on social media for her crazy sketches and her mad dances. Marta Troyan of the Phoenix de Koenig team in third place. A great performance by this Phoenix de Koenig rider rushing through in the last moments to take third place in the sprint. Katia Ragusa of the Live Racing Tech Fine team, a women's team that is born out of the Live Bike brand. She takes second place, without doubt, the biggest result of her career. The winner of the third edition of Paris Roubaix Fam Avec Swift is Alison Action Jackson, riding for the EF Education Tipco SVB team. They went all the way to the finish. They outdid the peloton. The breakaway made it to the Roubaix Velodrome, and she's about to lift the famed trophy as the winner of this race. Quite simply, the biggest result of her career so far, and she's going to do it, Jackson. Alison Jackson hoists the cobble aloft. She wins the third edition of the Paris Roubaix Fam Avic Swift, succeeds Lizzie Dignan and Elisa Longo Borghini. What a win that was.